Hi, my name is Lee. I'm here today to introduce you to stenciling. Stenciling can be used on anything virtually that's in your home, from floors, walls, on carpet. Some of the carpets are, are very smooth enough that you can stencil on them. They can be used on wearable art. Anything fabric, sheets, just it, the possibilities are endless. And I think it's because today they're so popular with the wider range of patterns available and the colors of paint and the different types of paint available. And as I said before, it can be used on anything in your home. And I've done here a bird feeder, just done with this very simple ivy design. Again, it's a very pretty idea. Very simple to do. That was just using one color. Taken a flower pot, base painted it white, and used two different colors on here again. And it's a simple, easy project to do. Some of the patterns available, again, this is what we call a one-piece pattern with the flower and the leaves. And when you go to use this, you want to take some masking tape and tape off the leaf area. So you're just working with the flower area. Then when you paint the, the leaf area, you mask off the flower area on the top. Again, it's very simple to do. Another idea, and these are just a very few of the patterns available. As I said, this is a nice bow, uh, it's a border. And there's a sunflower. And I saw this recently just done on, on a milk can in my friend's front hall. It was very, very pretty. Also available are blank sheets where you can design your own. And this is very trans translucent, actually. As you can see, you can put a pattern behind it. It can be a pattern from a coloring book, from anything. And you just draw it on with pencil and then use an X-Acto knife and cut out your pattern that you want to use. So if the pattern that you want to use is not available, you can just use this. You can take the pattern right off of your drapes if you've got flowers on your drapes and use that pattern. Works very well. Some of the other patterns we've got. Now these are, are patterns that come in three pieces. They're usually used on walls, for walls, floors, or furniture. And they have three separate pieces, sometimes four. Beautiful designs again. This is some blossoms. They're gorgeous. And again, with the colors of paint, again, here's the ivy design that I used on the bird feeder. That's just one color of paint shaded. Again, some more flowers. These are calla lilies. That's nice on a flower pot. And with Southwest, very popular, there's a Southwest design. Again, that uses two colors. Again, these are colors of your choice. There's a beautiful sunflower design again. And what do we have here? I think we have some irises. Again, they're very, very pretty. There's also patterns available, or rather, I mean instructions available that come with all these patterns so that there's no mistakes. You know exactly what to do step by step. The border that we're using today on the wall behind me is this pretty rose peony border. We've changed the colors slightly to match our drapes. You don't have to use the colors shown on here. As I said, you can use anything that matches your home. These type come in three different pieces. The first one is a leaf pattern. And again, I've already punched out the holes for that one. The second one is your, uh, let me get this right here so you can read it, are the outside petals on the flower. And the third one are the inside petals on the flower. And the first thing you have to do with your stencils, I'll show you on this one, it's a sunflower one, is they all come pre-punched. And you have to push these little pieces out and do it gently because this is very thin mylar. And the reason it's this thin is so that you can get it as close to the wall as possible. Some of them are hard to pull out, like this one. I'm not going to try and pull that. I'm going to use scissors on that one later on. It rips very carefully. So just punch those out. Some of them are in there a little tight. No, see that one won't come out either. So what you want to do is take some real sharp little scissors and just cut that end out there. They come out pretty good though. You don't have that much trouble with them too much. Anyway, take, make sure they all come out because you want them all out of there so you can stencil. Okay, I'm going to take these three pieces 
I'm going to go back to the wall and show you how to stencil on a wall. As you can see with this border, we took it right up the side of the window. We've used colors in this border to match the drapes that we hung and the arrangement behind me. I'm going to show you some of the products required to stencil on your wall, other than your stencil pieces, which you need. You're also going to need a level, and you're going to need a pencil and some masking tape. You need brushes, one for every color that you're going to be using, and today we're using four colors, so we need four brushes today. Your paint, this is called uh, spill-proof paint, and it really is spill-proof paint. It's the consistency of uh, shoe polish or lipstick, and it's great. It doesn't drip down your walls. And you need paper towels. Now, the very first thing you're going to do is determine where your border is going to go. Now, on this wall, if I was working at home, I would probably be stenciling across the very top of the wall on a ladder, or if I wanted a wainscot effect, I would be going low here. But for your sake and mine, for teaching and for you to view, I'm going to do an eye level thing. And I might even start a new trend. First thing you want to do is with your level is make little marks on the wall. I'm going to do these fairly heavy today so you can see them, but at home you don't have to have them this heavy. Just do light ones. And they're about every four to five inches across your wall. You're going to keep going. Again, I want to make sure that bubble is in the middle, and it's not. There we go. It's very important that this is level when you're working in the center of a wall. Now, once you've got that done, that is your, fo that is your line for your border. And on your stencil, and I'll show you right now, take the first piece of my stencil, and I'm going to just tape with some masking tape across the top and again across the bottom. And that's going to go up on the wall. And as you can see on this stencil, there is a line going. Let me just stick this up here for a second so it holds. There's a line going right through the center. And that is the line that we want to line up with what I just leveled. Now, this is kind of bunchy. I don't like that. I'm going to flatten it out. You don't want it all bumpy. I'm going to check this other side, and it's a little bit high, so I'm going to bring it down. You can see that line right through your stencil. This is very, very important. It's the most important thing when you're stenciling a border. Just flatten that down real tight. I'm going to use another piece of masking tape, I think, just on the end. Again, buy a couple of rolls of masking tape because it's very important that this is solid against the wall. Now, if you were doing the border up against your ceiling, this line, because most ceilings in houses, I know mine is, doesn't go straight. It goes just a little on the angle. And you're going to want this line to follow your ceiling line. If you have, for instance, your ceiling is on an angle like that, okay? You don't want your border going that way. It's just not going to look right. So go with the angle of your ceiling. The first step you're going to do once this is up here is you're going to take our green paint. And again, I need green paint, my brush, and a piece of paper toweling. And the first thing we're going to do is take our brush and twirl it into the paint like that. Then the next thing you want to do is you want to get rid of a lot of that paint because what you want to do is work with as dry a brush as possible. If you have too much paint on that, you're not going to get the nice shading that you want. So you're just going to clean that off. And it's better to use your paint often rather than putting too much paint on your brush. So the next step we're going to do, I'll work in this big area here, is you're going to go in a clockwise motion or, or counterclockwise just right into that hole. You're going to keep it moving all around in through that hole. I'm going to load my brush again and again I'm going to clean it. Always clean it on a paper towel. Don't ever go right from your jar right into your stencil. It'll be much too dark. I'm going to fill in all these holes as 
another one. Whoops, that one's kind of bent, so I'm going to just stick my finger up there to hold it down. This is actually fun. I'm going to load my brush again. This is nice working on the floor. I'm usually up a six foot ladder doing this. Got a few more to do over on this side. And I love these stencils because you can't really go wrong. It tells you everything to do on them from step one to step three. Just make sure you get right out to the edges. <coughs> Quite a few leaves on this one. This is the base and you need those on there so that your next pieces you know what to do with. We'll do the whole thing. Just about finished. Well, that took about a minute to do that one whole piece. Now what I've done is they're fairly well the same and I want to go back and I want to shade the areas on the perimeter. It's better to shade the perimeter of each hole. And then what I'm going to do is go just around the edge and put a, it's almost, well it is, it's putting a second coat on. Again, I'm going to do that. Don't go into the center of the hole. Just do your outside edges. You don't have to do them all. I think I've pretty well filled all the holes. Now the next step is we're going to take that off the wall. And as you can see, there's the start of your border. Now these lines that you see on here at home, that they would be much fainter and you can just use an eraser and get rid of them right here. Um, don't go any further though because you're going to need them later. Um, in fact, I would even probably wait till you're almost finished your three pieces before you start erasing. Okay, next step is, and I'm just going to get rid of that because we don't need it right now. One thing I forgot to tell you when I started is these jars of paint, when you first get them, they'll have a skin on the top and you just take your paper towel and just clean that out like that. The reason the green one didn't have one on because I just recently used it at home for my bedroom. So that didn't remind, remind me that it has a skin. Just clean them off. They stay um, fairly moist for a long time. This green one I used for the whole border in my bedroom and you can see that I hardly even put, empty this jar at all. It's only down about a quarter. Now the next step with print two of the flower. Again, we're gonna tape it top and bottom. And this is where it starts to get a little bit easier. So we're going to move to the wall. Now as you can see where your leaves are. Now on your stencil, it has register marks. The dash, dashes are register marks. And this shows you where to place it. That's going to go right over the leaves that I just did. Make sure it's lined up pretty good. And I think it is. Then you're going to just tape it top and bottom. As you can see, there's your lines of where you already did, and you know exactly where that second piece goes. Our second color is pink. I'm going to pick up pink. Again, a paper towel. And again, you're going to spin your brush into your paint, and then clean it off as much as possible. You're going to go into your holes and do the same thing. Just fill them all in. Just keep right on going. Make sure it's taped to the wall fairly tight or you'll get in behind. Slow down just a little bit here because I'm making the stencil move. I don't like that. That's pretty. Load my brush again. Do the little bud. Load. Do you believe how easy this is? And you can use any colors you want. This is what I like about it, is you can match anything in your home. I went the wallpaper gamut at, in my house, and now I want a more simplified, pure look. Make sure you get right out to the edges. Okay, now what I'm going to do with this one is start to shade, but I want to use another color, and you can use it right over top of the color that you just used. I'm going to use gold. <coughs> And again, because there's gold in the drapes and stuff, I just want to highlight the very edge of it. Again, clean the brush. 
and I'm going to go right into the edges of the paint, or rather the edges, outside edges of the stencil. And just go around the outside edges. It's the same thing I did with the leaf as a second coat in green, but now I'm doing yellow. Just around the outside. Most, most flowers aren't just one color, they're always just a wee bit shaded. There we go, that's the yellow. And then I'm going to do the bud in the darker color, just the tip of it. Again, I'm loading my brush and wiping it off so it's almost dry. I'm just going to do the tip of the bud right up there. And again, that one comes off. Now watch this, this is great, I love this part when you see it start to form. There we go, isn't that neat? Okay, I'm going to put that one away. Third part of the stencil, get rid of that. Again, is the outside, or rather the inside leaves. Same thing, tape it. Whoops, don't let it stick to your brushes. Okay, move back to the wall. And again, this has got repeat lines on it that you can fit right where your flower was that you just did. I'll make sure it's right. Tape it to the wall. Whoops. Make sure it's flat to your wall. You can see that's where I just did, and now I'm going to fill in these areas. And again, I'm going to use the darker color of pink and another paper towel. Buy lots of paper towels and, measure and masking tape. Load my brush again. This is a brush a bit too small for these holes. It's the only one I had in my toolbox here. It could be a bit bigger. Circular into the holes. Get in the edges. I don't want to go too hard in this one. Make sure those are all filled in. This really is fun. I did my bedroom on a real snowy afternoon and thoroughly enjoyed it. There. Now believe it or not, you're finished. That segment. And there, it's all done. Voila! Wasn't that easy? And what you'll do is you'll work down your wall. Again, there's your next set. You do the next flower border on top of that with a third one here. And keep going until you're finished. And it's so easy. It's, it's, it's amazing. I love this. I could do my whole house once you get started. It gets addictive. Now what I'm going to do, as I said before, there's lots of a few other ideas I want to show you and I'm going to move all this stuff over to the table and show you some other ideas that we have. One of the other ideas I want to show you is stenciling on fabric. I've used a sweatshirt here on a cardboard with some wax, wax paper in behind it and I've taped the stencil onto the front and again, because the flower and the leaves, this is a one-piece stencil, I've already painted the flower yellow, and I've taped off the bottom leaves. Now the next step is to do the leaves, I'm just going to stick this box under here so you can see better, is this tape has to come off now the leaf area. Do it gently so you don't pull any of that apart. And now I'm going to tape off the flower area, you just tip in the little pieces. Take that one off, and again just tape that off. I would probably do all my flower heads first and then do all the leaves last. I'm going to use my green, and the same thing applies. You twirl it into the paint, and then just put it onto a paper towel. And you're going to do the same circular motion right into the holes. It works great on fabric right in the holes. You can see how easy that's coming up. I'm just going to do these two flowers. Now you can do the same thing, take a smaller brush and do your second coat just on the edges so that you get some shading. Okay, now you have to picture that this is all done. I'm going to take this off again and show you. See how, oh, even the two flowers look great on there, but isn't that su super? It only took about three minutes to do each set. And that's all there is to that. And again, it's very simple as you can see. 
Now remember when you when you do this on shirts or any fabric of any kind, pre-wash it. Make sure it's pre-washed. Do not use fabric softener. That is very important. Fabric softener goes into the fibers and that's what it's meant to do to make the fabric soft. Therefore the paint will not stick to the fibers and it becomes a problem. So do not put fabric softener in your wash and don't wash it again for 72 hours. Then you can put fabric softener in, but not right away. Same with your walls. When you've done your walls, let the paint cure for seven days, at least seven days on your walls before you even want to wash them. One of the other great things you can do with stencils is embossing. And this is a procedure, again, using, we've used a rose stencil here and just some, some uh, note paper. And it gives you a, you lay your stencil rather down, preferably on a light table. It works best. You can see it best. Take your note paper, lay it face down onto your stencil. I'm going to lift this up so you can see it better. Take a stenciling tool and just push it into the holes, and which pushes it out, which gives it a raised effect on the front. And again, I took the stencil. I put it back onto the top. I got that right? Yep. Make sure it fits properly. Then take your brush again with a dry, dry, dry paint and just lightly go over the top. You can also use face powder, actually, it clings. And there it just sticks to the top of what has been embossed. And it's fun project embossing. All kinds of things you can do for your friends. I'm going to use that same stencil, actually, and show you another procedure we're using. What I'm going to do is tape this onto a box, just a simple wood chip box. Make sure it's taped down again really good. It's right onto the top. Now we're going to use a thing called a paint crayon. Kids love using these and they're very easy to do. What I want to do with this is you put the crayon around the edge of your stencil on the uncut out area. It just goes onto the edge. You don't put it right inside because then it gets too dark. Now you're going to take a brush. Again, I can use one of these brushes. And what you're going to do is take and pull that into the, into the stencil. Just pull it off the edge of the stencil into the holes. I'm going to want a bit more here. Didn't do it quite hard enough. It pulls it in. It gives it a nice translucent look. And it lets you do some shading, too. I'll keep going around just the edges here. Won't do the whole thing. The same thing applies to this. Don't try to wash it or clean it for a few days until it's cured. Just do a few more here. I'm going to make this stencil all the same color, even the leaves. Just pull it into the center, again around. Any type of paint would use here too, but this is just another idea that you, we have. Okay, I'm not going to finish the whole thing. I'm just going to take that off and let you have a look at it. Isn't that pretty on the white? It wouldn't take long to do the whole thing. Once you do the stem and the rest of the leaves, and that's all finished. As I said, stenciling can be done on anything. I used, again, this green paint, and I did my whole bedroom with it a couple weeks ago. I did a border. I have a mirror with no frame on it. I did around the mirror. I did the top of my bed sheets, plain white bed sheets and the pillowcases, and again around the skirt that goes on the bedside table. And there's not much taken out of this jar. It's, it's again, it would last forever. And it skins over, so you can reuse it again in five years if you want to, because it does not dry out. So I hope you've enjoyed stenciling, and you're going to Grab some of this stuff and go home and make your home beautiful.